the hare. One of the rarest habitats in Europe, a fertile low-lying grassy plain made of high shell content sand. Its origins date back to the Ice Age, where meltwater from glaciers swept vast amounts of sand in the sea that were then driven ashore by wind and wave action, creating the characteristic dunes and white beaches of Maher. My name is Jamie Boyle and I'm a site manager for the Royal Side Protection of Birds. The reserve was set up as a research and survey area and that's what it's been achieving for the last 50 years. Um, ultimately we want to carry on doing the research and survey work and to help bring wildlife into the crofting system and help it sort of coexist with the crofting system. But it's not only wildlife that relies on the Mechair. In fact, people living in the habitat have been using the fertile land to grow crops and as a grazing area for cattle and sheep. My name is uh, Jeff Martin. I am the postmaster of Dalibra and I am part-time crofter in Dalibra and photographer too. You got a house on a croft. You have to keep the croft alive. The system of crofting is quite complicated for uh, someone like me who is not from here. There is a committee grazing on each township. So this is, uh, we, we are linked to Dalibra, common grazing committee, where uh, it's uh, us as crofters that we have, uh, we have to manage together the use of the common grazing. The Mac Alive project was set up um, looking at crofting and looking at the problems that crofting have, particularly viability and um, changes from sort of traditional farming and you know, looking at the effects that was having and it was, uh, it was sort of set up to try and mitigate against the effects of that and bring in system or a way the crofters could work the area roughly following traditional farming and enabling sort of them you know to have a profitable business. There was various elements to Maca life. We did a four-year research and looking at the different techniques that are used in the Maca because although it generally follows a sort of traditional form of farming there's quite a few variations to that. It looked at these variations and to see which were the, the richest for wildlife, which were the easiest for crofters to do, and looked at machinery and the new machinery we could use. And it was great and it also sort of highlighted the macro as well that brought you know, more focus on the macro because it's a habitat that's not actually very widely known. The old-fashioned way of crofting is totally benefit for the wildlife. But nowadays things are changing very fast with the, the use of heavy machinery, new breed of sheep and cattle. The people tend not to, uh, to keep native breed. The last five years we have decided to, uh, not to be like the other crofter. Ten years ago for cattle we had uh, Aberdeen Angus cattle and we had a very harsh cold winter. We were probably at uh, eight, nine thousand pounds of feeding for five cattle and it was it was not worth it at all, so we decided maybe to, to review, to change our last livestock. And two, three years later, we got ri rid of the Aberdeen Angus and we went to the Highland cattle that are uh, native from the island, that are less demanding, that are eating less, and are doing less damage on the ground too, so that's very important. And for sheep, I think this is the this is the last year that uh, we are going to have the white sheep here. In September, we decided to buy a small flock of uh, Hebridean black sheep. They are from there, so they can cop any type of weather. They eat less. They just lamb outside. The Maca, it's a very interesting place to, uh, to see on a daily basis because it changes all the time. Hour by hour, the color change. During the winter, when it's stormy, the sound from the shore is uh, blasting every, everywhere. The way that uh, the environment is changing, you can go any time of the year, you will see something different.
All habitats are important, but the marker is a very rare habitat. It's only found in sort of Scotland. It's an unusual habitat because it's uh, rich, it's shell sand sort of blown across underlying grass. But it's also, it's not just the, really the marker, it's a system that comes with it, the crofting system that survives with it. And it has, it's an incredibly rich area for wildlife. It's a really beautiful area. It's, it's got great potential for tourism and to show that, you know, uh, wildlife's a natural asset to these islands. The Maccas are incredibly important to these islands. If sea levels rose, it's a huge problem. Obviously, most of the Maccas are just about two metres above sea level. So a slight change in sea level rises and stormy, more stormy weather's coming from the west and places like that, you know, could have a huge influence on what happens out here. It is so fertile that the floor of the area can include up to 45 species in any metre square. This peculiar habitat is home to different wildlife species, which rely entirely on it for their survival. The crowded beaches host red shanks, oyster catchers, and sandlings. The inhabitants of the rich grasslands can vary from small invertebrates ground nesting birds such as geese and the endangered lapwing. Because uh, of our location on Croft, we are we are in touch with S SNH, RSPB, and uh, many many uh, public agencies from uh, UK, Europe. The survey and research work is ongoing, and we're constantly uh, changing and developing around the sort of crofting system to see if there's ways that we can work with the crofters. At the moment, we're uh, concentrating on using the government agri-environmental schemes. Organisations like the RSPB don't have enough money to um, sort of make huge changes out here, so we try to utilise sort of money that's made available by the government, and we try to pressurise the government into recognising the area, and that it's worth putting money in and helping sort of uh, the farming and crofting and wildlife on these islands. Maher, a unique habitat that we must protect, a field of hope. Thank you.